So, good morning and welcome back to NPTEL course on classics in total synthesis part 1. In the last lecture we talked about the total synthesis of strychnine by Viresh Raval and Larry Overman's group. So, today uh, we will uh, talk about another total synthesis of strychnine reported by Martin Kunis group. Okay. So, here in this total synthesis again uh, they used uh, isostrychnine root that means they synthesize uh, via isostrychnine and the key reactions which they used was a tandem manic co prearrangement and manic reaction. Okay. So, that is a key reaction used to construct the 5 member ring. So, this is uh, this 5 member ring they constructed using this key reaction 5 member as well as this 6 member ring okay. together they constructed using this 3 reactions in one step. First they reported racemic synthesis then they used a chiral, a chiral version starting with the corresponding chiral amino acid. So, overall it took about 14 steps to complete this uh, synthesis of strychnine. So, their synthetic strategy uh, as I said dependent on 3 reactions in one part they are manic reaction followed by co prearrangement followed by another manic reaction. So, they did a model study where they started with this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde derived from purine 3 carbaldehyde. So, they treated this with this corresponding amino ester in the presence of Lewis acid at high temperature. The first the aldehyde forms imenium ion with this amine, aldehyde forms imenium ion and the managed reaction takes place. Once the managed reaction takes place this is the intermediate you get that is the first intermediate. Now, you can see this can undergo a co prearrangement. So, 1 phi diene ok this 1 phi diene can undergo co prearrangement. So, once it undergoes co prearrangement you get this intermediate. So, now you have a 9 membered ring ok. So, what you have is a 9 membered ring because of the co prearrangement. Then as I said it undergoes the second managed reaction. So, the second managed reaction cyclizes again back to the 6 phi system ok. So, that is how in one part he could successfully make this tetracyclic compound basically he made 2 rings in one part. So, that is the key reaction which he later used for the synthesis of strychnine. So, for the synthesis of strychnine he does not need this furan. Okay. He wants an aldehyde, okay. he wants an aldehyde. So, what he did? He started with the corresponding protected aldehyde. It is a furan, he got this compound. And the next slide we also will see how this starting material was made from commercially available starting material. So, he started with this tryptophan, tryptophan is NH2. Then he treated with tertiary butyl oxychloride. So, tertiary butyl oxychloride is known to introduce chlorine here. Okay. So, that way you get the chlorine here. Now, you treat with dimethyl manodine and sodium ethoxide. Okay. So, that will give you the, the CHCOTME, COTME. What you do not need here is one COTME you do not need. Okay, and one benzyl group you do not need. So, it is easy one of the esters can be easily removed by Krapcho condition you heat it at high temperature lithium chloride and dimethyl acetone then dimethyl acetamide. So, you treat this with lithium chloride and dimethyl acetamide it undergoes decarboxylation. So, you get only one ester. Now, as I said you do not need one more benzyl group. So, you can easily selectively remove by doing hydrogenolysis. So, that is how this starting material was prepared in 4 steps. Okay, starting material was prepared in 4 steps, but I should say 5 steps from tryptophan. Okay. So, once this, this was prepared then this was treated with this alpha beta and saturated aldehyde. So, as I said in one pot 3 reactions taking place a managed reaction 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement that is co prearrangement followed by another managed reaction. Okay. So, then 
a co prearrangement followed by another manage you get the corresponding tetracyclic compound. So, earlier we had furan, now you have the dimethoxy carb. Okay. Once you have this, next what you should do is you have to hydrolyze the acetal to aldehyde, hydrolyze the acetal to aldehyde. So, you do that. Now, the aldehyde can be homologated. So, how do you connect this? Now, you have to connect this two, is not it? Now, you have to connect these two and you need one more carbon atom. Basically, you need one more carbon atom and connect this. So, that can be done. Now, if you take this and then treat with trimethyl sulfonium elide. The trimethyl sulfonium elide, as you know, when it treats with aldehyde, it will form an epoxide, is not it? So, that is what you get you get an epoxide. Now, this epoxide, okay, if you remove the benzyl group, if you remove the benzyl group hydrogenolysis, then what will happen? It will open the epoxide. So, when it opens the epoxide, from the less hindered side, if it attacks, you get the thermodynamic products. Okay. Or it can also attack this carbon. Okay. One will give 5 membered ring, other will give a 6 membered ring, okay. correct? One will give this is 5 membered, this is 6 membered. So, you take the thermodynamic product that is the 6 membered which is required, then that can be controlled to get only one as the major product. Now, if you remove the benzyl group, okay, benzyl group can be easily removed under hydrogenolysis condition, then the double bond, you know I mean the push pull double bond can be reduced with sodium cyanoborahyl. But you get a mixture at this carbon, you get a mixture at this carbon, no problem. The free hydroxyl, now you have the free hydroxyl that should be acetylate. Okay. So, when you acetylate, <coughs> At that stage, you should be able to separate these two. Okay, so you have this beta ester and alpha ester in the ratio three is to one. Okay, you can take both beta and alpha. You can take both beta and alpha ester and treat with two reagents successfully. One is lithium hexamethyl diacylacide. Say, what is lithium hexamethyl diacylacide? or what it what will it do? It is a base, hindered base. So, you have N acetate, is not it? That N acetate what it does? Here, you can see, okay, I have written only this portion, LIHMDS lithium hexamethyl diacylacide will generate anion here and it can attack this and your OME will come out. So, that way you will get a 6 numbered 1 3 dicarbonyl compound, 6 numbered 1 3 dicarbonyl compound and followed by treatment with sodium ethoxide methanol. The sodium ethoxide methanol will hydrolyze the acetate and you get this. Okay. So, both will give but the second one that is this, the first step it does not work, so it hydrolyzes only the acetate and in the second step you treat with lithium hexamethyl diacylacide and you can get this. Okay. Once you have this, now you can see how many rings you have made, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. What is missing? You have to connect the seventh ring. That is a seven membered ring you have to connect. How do you do it? You reduce the ketone, you reduce the ketone to alcohol. Basically, you have to introduce a double bond. You have to introduce a double bond. Now, you treat with acetic anhydride, you get a beta alpha acetate, okay, does not matter. Then you treat with DBU. Okay, when you treat with DBU, you get this intermediate. Okay. So, if you look at other synthesis, you, you will see this intermediate you would have seen. 
Now what you need is you have to homologate this, you have to oxidize this hydroxyl and do the homologation. So how will you do? First you oxidize with Swan, Swan condition to get the ketone, then you do the Wittig reaction. So when you do the Wittig reaction, the destabilized Wittig, you get the corresponding alpha beta and such a tester both E and Z in 1 is to 1 ratio. Okay. And you know you need this isomer, is not it? You need this isomer for the cyclization to get the 7 membered ring. No problem, so this can be isomerized. So, one isomer can be isomerized to the required one through a photochemical condition. So, photochemical is you know very well the double bond can be isomerized, cis trans isomerization or trans cis isomerization can be done under photochemical condition. So, once you have this alpha beta suggester with the right regiochemistry, then reduce it with dibol. Okay, once you reduce with dibol, that will give you the isostrychnine. As you know, isostrychnine has been converted into strychnine in one step by treatment with base. Okay. The base first it will isomerize the double bond here, then followed by oxamicyl addition you will get strychnine. Okay. So, this was a very simple straightforward synthesis. However, the key step was one part manage 3, 3 sigma tropic rearrangement and another managed reaction. Then he also used another route instead of homologating using Wittig reagent, he used a vinyl grignard addition. So, on this ketone they added vinyl grignard to get the tertiary allylic alcohol. Then he did the palladium catalyzed rearrangement. So, after making the tertiary alcohol as acetate, he treated with the palladium catalyst to get the allylic rearrangement, allylic rearrangement to get this protected allylic alcohol. Okay. So, once you have that, if you treat with potassium hydroxide THF that the acetate is hydrolyzed, then you oxidize, you get the corresponding aldehyde. Okay. That aldehyde can be isomerized to get this iso particular isomer, then sodium borohydride cerium chloride sodium borohydride cerium chloride reduces the aldehyde to corresponding alcohol that was acetylated and that is called isostrychnine acetate. And that alcohol itself if you treat with base that will convert the isostrychnine into strychnine. So, these are the two strategies he used to make isostrychnine and strychnine. Okay. But if you look at these two approaches by reported by Kuhne, both are racemic synthesis. He also tried and reported an asymmetric synthesis and in this asymmetric synthesis he started with tryptophan derivative okay, chiral 1 and he also took about 14 steps the same number of steps which he took for the synthesis of racemic strychnine. Okay. So, now the difference between the earlier one and now is this chiral center. Okay. Everything else is same except this additional chiral center. Then he treated with this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde and R being CH OME and OME. Okay. So, you do the same reaction and you get the same product and here this is CHOME, CHOME the main difference is this compound is chiral. So, because of one chiral center present you can make now 3 chiral centers. Okay. Once you have that then you do not want this ester is not it, you do not want this ester, okay, ester uh, it, it did its uh, purpose. It introduced 3 new chiral centers. So, once that is done you have to remove that. So, first you convert that ester into amide. So, that is normally done by reflexing with ammonia. Then the amide to cyanide was done with trifluoroacetic anhydride, a dehydrating agent. Amide to cyanide can be done that basically you are removing water. You are doing with trifluoroacetic anhydride. Once you have the cyanide, the cyanide group can be removed because you have lone pair here 
so the lone pair will help so potassium borohydride you get the corresponding pyrrolidine ring without the cyanide ok next it is straightforward so what we have done earlier so this is the aldehyde you remember this is the aldehyde we got, we had and once you have this aldehyde what he did he treated this with the corresponding tributyl tin methanol tributyl tin methanol but the alcohol was protected at protected with ethyl vinyl ether okay so now if you treat with butyl lithium butyl lithium what will happen it will exchange it will exchange this and then you will get a lithium here that lithium will add to this aldehyde so you what you get is this compound basically you have the ch2 and the alcohol is protected as ethoxyethyl ether ethyl vinyl ether and ethoxyethyl ether okay then you oxidize the secondary alcohol under swan like condition to get the ketone then remove the protecting group that is ethoxyethyl group under acidic condition you get ethoxyethyl is like thp protection okay so you remove that and then you get the corresponding ch2oh once you have the ch2oh convert that into tosylate okay tosylate now if you remove this benzyl group automatically it will undergo sn2 reaction and then this tosylate will go and you will get this six membered ring okay so now you have made pentacyclic core structure of strychnine so what is required you have to add the two carbon unit and then cyclize and then you get the isostrychnine structure or gumlich aldehyde so what he did he did a wittig reaction okay the wittig reaction gave a mixture then the required one he took and then treated with dibol okay when you treat with dibol it forms the one is so this is not as reactive as this so one can selectively reduce that to get the alcohol now you reduce this double bond selectively using sodium cyanoborohydrate acetic acid you get this compound okay you can see the double bond is reduced and it gives only one isomer sodium ethoxide methanol in thf sodium ethoxide methanol in thf this compound you can write like this okay the compound can be written this way so what is happening sodium ethoxide methanol look at this chiral center hydrogen is beta whereas here alpha so the epimerization takes place the epimerization takes place to give alpha hydrogen so once you have that then dibol will give this ester will be converted into aldehyde as soon as the aldehyde is formed this alcohol will attack the aldehyde to give valent gumlich aldehyde as you know when you talk about total synthesis of strychnine there are two key intermediates one is valent gumlich aldehyde other one is isostrychnine so you can make either isostrychnine or valent gumlich aldehyde if you make isostrychnine which he made okay that is in the racemic synthesis of strychnine martin kuhn made isostrychnine okay via wittig reaction so he did a wittig reaction he also did vinyl grignard followed by palladium catalyzed rearrangement then he made the corresponding isostrychnine here in this case he what he made was valent gumlich aldehyde what he made was valen gumlich aldehyde the valen gumlich aldehyde is also known to be converted into strychnine in a single step you have the lactal the lactal on treatment with wittig reagent okay or you can use malonic acid acetic anhydride and acetic acid so you will get the alpha beta and saturated ester okay this aldehyde will react aldehyde and alcohol the aldehyde will form alpha beta and such acid and also cyclize with this uh, nh and in same process the oxa michael addition also will take place all will take place in one step the vilan vilan gumlich aldehyde can be converted into 
uh, strychnine successfully by treating with malonic acid, acetic acid, sodium acetate and acetic acid. Okay. So, this is again another interesting total synthesis. So, we talked about uh, 4 total synthesis of strychnine. We started with total synthesis of Woodward. Okay, so, Woodward used a very nice classical method to synthesize strychnine. Then we talked about Viresh Ravel. So, Viresh Ravel used a very nice uh, intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction to construct uh, the 6 membered ring here. Then we talked about uh, Larry Overman used a cleverly a Kleisen rearrangement, okay, Ireland Esther Kleisen rearrangement to get the 6 membered ring and he also used a managed reaction, a combination of managed reaction and Kleisen rearrangement to get the 5 and 6 membered ring. Here in this case, in Martin Kuhne's total synthesis of uh, strychnine, he used a domino manage and 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement followed by another manage. So, 3 reactions in one part to construct the C and D ring. Okay. So, with this we will stop and then we will talk about more um, alkaloids and other natural products in the next few lectures. Thank you.